So building membrane proteins from hydrophobic residues with only alpha helices is a very simple way to create them. And that's why the first structures we found look that way. Bacteria rhodopsin, 1990, seven transmembrane helices, all alpha helical and very hydrophobic. Aquaporin 1997, well, it's not quite helix, but you have two reentrant helices and they pair up to effectively form one long helix. I will count that as one helix, that's fine, except in confirming the rule. But as, as time has gone on, we've seen more and more proteins that are very complicated. Glutamate transporter, we have a horizontal helix here, multiple reentrant regions, two proteins are likely interacting with each other, I won't even start to go into details. So why does this happen? Well, likely because when we started determine structures, we started with the lowest hanging fruit, and the lowest hanging fruit were the easy ones that were easy to predict and understand. Be aware that there is a selection bias in chemistry and in science in general. We start by finding the easy stuff. Doesn't mean that everything is easy. So are all membrane proteins helical? No, there are some beta sheets too, but in the interest of time, I'm not really gonna go through it. Um, in terms of statistics, 95% is helix. To understand membrane protein interactions between lipids, starting just with the helix is gonna be fine enough for now.